Hello YouTube and welcome to a new short play playthrough we're going to be doing today. This game is supposed to be like 10 minutes long um, and what it is called is it's called Shrinking Pains. So you're not seeing the main menu of the game uh, right now because it is completely white and I am blindingly bright on it. I clicked through a couple panes in the game and it doesn't look that bad. Um, if it's really as bad as I think it's going to be, um, then I will take out the face cam for the video. But I wanted to make this video because I am still backlogging. So I am still prepping for um, the long trip that my husband and I are going to take back home. So I am recording just as much as I possibly can. And we just finished up Portal. And I have a couple of one-offs that I've been sitting on for a while. And I feel like I, I should go through them. I'll, I want to play them. I've, I've been sitting on them for a good long moment here. So I'm just going to chug through them for a couple of Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're just going to get some bonus one-off videos until I decide what next series I want to go up. But uh, yeah, so this is called Shrinking Pains. It is a free game on Steam. There, <laughs> you should be looking at the links to it right now. It is it, The developer of this game is Bedtime Phobias. And this game was actually created in, I think, 48 hours for a game jam. Um, if you don't know what a game jam is, it is a uh, just where a bunch of game devs come together with a limited amount of time. They crank out games and then people play them and vote on them. It's actually really cool. I love game jam games. I love seeing what people can come up with in such a limited amount of time. Um, anyways, this game was released a little bit earlier this year and I'm going to put a warning right here. This game focuses solely on anorexia. It focuses solely on the eating disorder um, known as anorexia. Um, and it is about somebody struggling with it. And I, I don't know too much else about the game because I didn't want to spoil it for myself. But I, I did want to play through it because this is something that, that hits pretty close to home for me. So I want to see what this is about. But I just want to put a warning. If you're sensitive to anything like that, please click off of this video. Um... I'm saying please because I can't tell you what to do, but I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable watching uh, whatever I post. So there's your warning. This is going to focus very heavily on eating disorders. So just, just, I'm going to give you some time to click off. This is what I look like in person, like IRL. This is actually what I look like. So this is blinding and it's terrible. If it is too bad throughout the entire playthrough, I'm going to uh, just cut the face cam. Sound fair? I think that sounds fair. Okay, start. Uh, partner preference, um, everyone. I am bisexual. See, it doesn't- it, it looks pretty bad. We'll see. I don't know. I don't wanna- I don't wanna dwell on too much of the face cam, so. Did your ceiling always look like that? Light slants in from the bedroom window. Um, falling in stripes across the sheets. You can feel Taylor w waking next to you. He yawns, stretching his limbs to fit the corners of the bed. His skin presses against yours, sweet in its accident, before he lays a kiss to your shoulder. <coughs> Good morning, love. You hear feet pad across the floor as he leaves the room. You lie in bed for an, another hour checking your phone. After all, you don't have anywhere to be until tonight. There's a few messages from you, To, your best friend, and a handful of notifications from your various social medias. None of it holds your attention long. No new messages. Awesome. <laughs> Eventually, you pull yourself out of bed. It's harder than you remember it being. You join Taylor in the kitchen. He's at the counter making coffee, already dressed for work. Did your ceiling always look like that? Bright. It's bright. It's bad. It's pretty bad. We'll see. How are you feeling? Can I hit space? Nope. It's clicking. Okay. I'm okay. You sure? You're not looking great. Nah, I'm fine. He looks worried. His delicate features tighten their concern. He avoids your eyes. As long as you're sure. Would you like a coffee? Taylor asks, and then immediately starts to make you one, leaving you little choice. You've learned not to say no. It only makes him suspicious. You don't want him to worry. He chatters to fill the silence as he pulls a mug from the shelf, boils the kettle, stirs in too much sugar when he thinks you're not looking. When it's ready, Taylor places it firmly on the counter in front of you. Hi, Taylor. Ooh, Ooh Taylor. You wrap your hands around the cup to appease him. It's his favorite. The one with an obscure pop culture the one with an ex uh, the one with an obscure pop culture reference that you never understand no matter how many times he's explained it. I'm looking forward to tonight. Did you remember to make the booking? Of course, Blue Ginger, your favorite. Our favorite. He laughs when he corrects you. You like his laugh. You haven't heard it in a while. What time should I get there? Seven seven thirty, please. There's something brittle in Taylor's smile as he packs his lunch. He kisses you before he leaves, slow and steady. 
I figured out the solution to our problem. I turned the brightness nearly all the way down on my monitor. I wish you could restart this episode. Okay, we should be good. Anyways, there's something brittle in Taylor's smile as he packs his lunch. He kisses you before he leaves slow and steady. Happy two years, my love. Aw. The house feels lonely without him. You look at your coffee, you want to drink it, but part of you cowers at the smell, the warmth, the idea of it being inside you. Dot dot dot. Did it crash? No, okay. When you're sure Taylor won't come, come back, you pour it down the sink. It's nice to be here with you. Thank you for organizing this. The waiter is nondescript when they sidle up to your table. I don't know how to pronounce that word. You haven't eaten today. You'd like to keep it that way. You'd sat in the kitchen for hours watching the day tick by as anxiety gripped too tight, pressed itself into your nerves and synapses. You have to do this for him. You have to try. The menu makes your hands shake, so you hide them beneath the table, grip the skin of your legs as your stomach clenches. You're doing this for him. Taylor orders, oblivious to your turmoil. You're good at hiding in plain sight. The waiter asks for your order. Pasta, salad, vegetables. Pasta, please. Are you enjoying your bones? He smiles, pleased. You don't deserve him. You make small talk while you wait. He tells you about work. You update him on Yuto. There's an essay. There's an easy intimacy to your exchange, which changes the moment food arrives. The conversation stutters, strains. You can't keep up. Can't stop thinking of the food in front of you. You push it around the plate, attempt to make it appear smaller. You know you're not fooling him, but you try anyways. You stare at Taylor's plate, the quail carcass ripped apart, blood and butter coagulating beneath its bones. For a long moment, you wish you could be that open. He saws a piece of breast indelicately and brings it to his mouth, meat wet against his lips. You wish you were him, could lift, could lift fork to teeth and swallow down parts of an animal, parts of anything. Feel it heavy in your belly, the weight of something inside you. It makes you sick. You can't stop thinking about food, or the lack of food, or the promise of food, the smell, the feel of the fat on your thighs pressing together when you sit down, the fold where your stomach meets your legs. You'd be perfectly marbled, white and red under his knife. That's it. He's crying. When you meet his eyes, you're surprised to see he's crying. I can't do this. He stands up from the table, grabs his bag, exits the restaurant without looking back. You're not surprised when he leaves you that night. Did your ceiling always look like that? Yuto, hey! None of us have heard from you for a while. Are you okay? Okay, so I haven't said too much because I kind of wanted to just really immerse myself into what is going on and the situation and I gotta say reading everything from this person's point of view is if you don't struggle with anorexia or an eating disorder is pretty dang close to how it is um I'm gonna go off on a little tangent here but I I struggled a lot with anorexia in high school and in early middle school um there are a couple of things, a couple ideas that I have of where it stemmed from, a couple things that counselors have told me where it could have possibly stemmed from, but the, the long, the, the, the truth of the matter is I struggled with it for a very long time. I believed that if I hit over 95 pounds, it, it, it was something I didn't want. I never wanted to be heavier than 95 pounds, so from freshman year to the end of senior year, I only weighed 93 pounds. Um, I'm 5'3", 93 pounds, I was, I was tiny. I was so, so small, but in my head, I had gotten this image of if I go over 95, I, I would just, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle that idea. It made me sick to even think about it. And for a long time, I thought it was something like, something appearance wise, but it, it was kind of more because while I never wanted to weigh more than 95, I wanted to eat. I wanted it so bad, but it's true every time. I thought about food, I got nauseous because in my brain I had taught myself that I didn't want to eat because I didn't want to gain weight or I didn't want to eat for whatever reason. Everybody has their own reasons, but for me it was I never wanted to gain that weight. I never wanted it inside of me. So whenever I did eat, I'd bite and it would it it taste awful. 
Food would taste gross. I had tricked my brain to thinking every food was disgusting tasting. The second anything touched my lips, even water, I was nauseated. I could not eat and I never wanted to. I never wanted anything inside of me, but at the same time, I, I was so envious of everybody else because they could, because they didn't have this battle in their head, you know? They didn't have the, I can't eat this because blah, blah, blah. They didn't have it. And I struggled with it for a very, very long time. And it, it, I still do. <laughs> I'm acting like it's over, but I still do. Um, it's not as prominent anymore. I've gained a lot of positivity about my body. Um, back then, I guess it must have been, I, I thought that over 95 was fat. And let me tell you guys right now, men and women, boys and girls, 95 pounds is not fat. 110 pounds is not fat. 120 pounds is perfectly healthy. Never, never. I, I wish I could take so much back from when I was in high school. I wish I could tell things that I tell people things that I knew. Like I could tell my friend, you're 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 not disgusting, you're not ugly, or hey, you don't have to watch what you're doing. Like it <sighs> There's so much thought that goes into having an eating disorder. It was exhausting. I would constantly be thinking about what I was eating, what was in front of me, how much I'd have to take bites, how many bites I would have to take. Um, before people would let me be finished eating or my parents would say I could go upstairs. There was so much thought and it got to a point where I got so bad that I would eat and then I would go to the bathroom and I would throw up because I never wanted it to go through me fully. And now that I'm talking about it, I guess the, the, the full truth of it was I thought I was fat. I did. I really did. And I struggle with it today. I do. Um, I looked in the mirror and I saw, I don't, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, no, you can see. That's my collarbone. I saw those and I saw my ribs and I said, I'm fat. And in my head, it made sense. It made a lot of sense. So what do you do when you think you're overweight? You, you work out. Well, I wasn't working out or you watch what you eat, you eat certain things. And my solution was to stop eating. And then it became a routine. And then it became a part of life. It became an everyday thing. And I don't know why I'm having such a hard time talking about this. Okay, let's continue with this. Let's continue with this situation. Okay, I'm gonna say not really hey. Thought so. I'll be around tonight around seven with some food. You can tell me your woes. Thanks. Cool. Have a good day. You wake up to the sound of the front door closing. Did you fall asleep again? It can't possibly be seven already. You can hear Yuto yelling from the kitchen. Are you seriously still sleeping? I'm unpacking the groceries. Your vision swims as you get out of bed. Because you haven't eaten. That's... You put your hand to the wall, wait for it to clear. You wonder if it's meant to take this long. Hey, Yuto, what's up? Yuto stands at the counter, half empty, half empty grocery bags laid out in front of him. You can see the shiny red of cap, cap, yup, nestled ne next to the prepackaged sandwiches. From another, the smell of roast chicken wa wafts towards you, enticing and disgusting. Hey, sleepyhead, how are you feeling? Actually, don't answer that. I know you're feeling like shit. Sorry to hear about Taylor. I know you really loved him. You don't have anything to say, so you remain quiet. It reminds you of being in the kitchen with him, voice chattering as he rummaged through cupboards, his warmth in every corner of the room. You want to feel something, but you're empty. Lately, you're always empty. I know that when you stop, I know that you stop eating when you're stressed, so I bought the basics. Yudo continues, unperturbed by your silence. Fruit, veg, chicken, a little something from every food group to keep you going. Oh man, the chicken smells amazing. Do you want some now? Um. <sighs> I'm okay. Oh, okay. I'm gonna help myself, is that okay? You nod. It'd be rude to say no. Yudo busies himself ripping open the plastic packaging before reaching into the bag with his hands. He tells you about his day as he pulls off the herb skin, sets it on a plate, and sets it on a plate. Updates you on your mutual friends as he twists off a drumstick, a thigh, the muscle white and pink, greasy against his fingertips. Your stomach lurches. You're not sure if it's in hunger or fear. Maybe both. All you know is that you want to be sick. Hey. Hey. Yudo looks unsettled. Half a thigh is gone. There's a spot of fat in his shirt. I'm worried about you. 
He says it softly, like he's half hoping you won't hear it. You reassure him that you're fine. He looks unconvinced, but changes the subject. It's been a while since everyone's seen you. What are you doing tomorrow? Nothing. Great, it's Mai's birthday. You should come. Where is it? At Blue Ginger, your favorite. It's like the air has been sucked out of your lungs. Panic. You watching them eat, them watching you eat, watching them watching you, watching your plate. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Right there. Can't. You can't. That is something that was constantly going through my head. And more than once, more than twice, more than a dozen times, I've broken down over those words. Just absolute, absolute, just a sob fest. It was just bananas because I would look at something and if you don't know spaghetti is my favorite food in the entire world I used to gobble it up as a kid my mom would make it and I'd have plate after plate after plate and then it, it, it got to the point where my favorite food would be put in front of me and I'm just like you can't but I wanted to really really badly but I was also feeling sick but I wanted to but I didn't because if it did then I'd be sick and you can't. You can't becomes your mantra in, in this kind of situation. At least for me it did. Let's continue. Oh, um, I don't think that will work. What? Why? I can't. Uh, sorry. Yudo's mouth twists. His hands twist. He scrapes his leftovers into the bin and leaves. You don't remember the last time your fridge was this full. You'd learnt your lesson the last time you binged. Rice thins coated in expired condiments. You'd been sick for days. Is this really worth it? That's an ambulance in real life. Okay. Did your ceiling always look like that? Put your phone away. Message Taylor. Message Yuto. Um, let's message Yuto. Sorry I missed the party. Wasn't expecting to hear from you. We all missed you. Hey, you okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'm out of town for the week, but I'll visit when I'm back. Okay, gotta go. This reception is crap. You spend long moments staring at the ceiling. Everything aches from your stomach to your mouth to your bones. The sheets feel like lead pressing down against you, suffocating. You can't stay here. You only remember how you got here in stolen moments. My throat is- I'm sorry. Her glare across the bar. The way she stole half-empty wine glasses out of people's hands. Vivian, she said her name was. Voice husky and dangerous. She would grabbed your arm and held you close, like a lamb to the slaughter led you to the taxi. Is what's in your head so riveting? Hi, lady. Vivian swims into view. She's easily the most beautiful person you've seen in real life, but in a cold, perfected way. She has the face- of the devil, and mouth the color of wine. <clears throat> Her every gesture polished, every smile cruel. Sharp angles and bad intentions. You look like a bird. Vivian lights a cigarette with practiced ease, breathes in deep, lets the smoke marinate in her lungs before she exhales. She carelessly flicks the ashes onto the sheets. They graze your calf, and while you flinch, she laughs, low and mocking. She stubs out the cigarette on the bed next to you, close enough to feel the burn. Hey, what's going on? Will you sing for me, little bird? Ooh, mama. Vivian purrs in your ear as she fists your hair, pulling your head back. You feel scared but excited as she bares your throat, your body an altar for her feast to from. For her to feast from. Her fingernails are black and sharp into points. They leave long red marks down your back, your front, the cellulite-scarred skin of your thighs. You gasp, part pain, part pleasure. You deserve this. Let her take from you until there's nothing left. Is Vivian real? Uh, she strokes the dips between your ribs, kisses the indents under each and every vertebrae. Ribs. Okay, you want to be completely empty. Whitewashed. When she hurts you, nothing. When she tastes you, nothing. There's just the unfamiliar ceiling and the offering of your body. The unfamiliar ceiling? You will have bruises for weeks. Vivian is smoking again. You don't have the strength to roll over. Little bird, I'm going to order room service. What would you like? Nothing. 
I have to go. What's the rush, little one? I'm sorry, I need to leave. You're still drunk and aching, but you pull yourself out of bed. You're not sure whose clothes you grab, yours or hers, but in record time you're dressed. The thought of food scares you more than her hidden kind of violence. Ooh, saucy. You're in front of the fridge. Why are you in front of the fridge? You can feel blood slide down your inner thigh. You're filthy. Oh, that's static. Oh my god. Lettuce or water? Um... A person can go a couple weeks or a week longer without food than water, right? Water. Get water in you. I forgot I was drunk. Water, it'll weigh you down, slosh in your belly, but you're drunk and you're allowed this, surely. Surely. Did your ceiling always look like that? You check your phone. Message Yuto. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, are you okay? Yeah, I just wanted to know how you're doing. Still not sure about this. I haven't seen you in weeks. Where have you been? Working. That's a lie. You've been at home watching your unfamiliar ceiling. Okay, well, I miss you. I'm here if you need me, okay? It's hard to hold the phone up. Hmm. Time stretches, time lags. You're not sure how you got here. You don't remember getting into the car, pulling out of the driveway, navigating the traffic lights near your home. You look down, look up. Your vision swims, your hands shake and slacken, unable to grip worn out leather. Your chest heaves, but each breath is shallow, agonizing, muscles weak, lungs weak. You're so weak. Not the first time you passed out at the wheel. Everything is getting a lot static. You don't want to be here. The fridge is so cold. Your skin crawls. You want to be nothing but skin, bones, and bare essentials. Oh. No! When I click on it, it gets smaller. It's one pixel wide. Eat nothing. Did your ceiling always look like that? You check your phone. There's a message from someone that can only be Yuto. You squint. Try to make out the letters. They're fuzzy, unclear. Your fingers feel clumsy whenever you try to type out a word. Your tongue is heavy in your mouth. Limbs feel like lead. Hand falls against the covers. Phone spills to the floor. Did your ceiling always look like that? Yuto. Yuto is coming today. Did your ceiling always look like that? So that was Shrinking Pains, guys. Um, and... I gotta say, you know, you go into a game like this where you know it contains such heavy material and you're always kind of worried about how it'll actually be and I think this was pretty accurate, so... I'm gonna tell kind of my story. I told it a little bit in the middle of the video, but I'm gonna go over it again. So, in high school, um... You know, you go into high school and everything like that. You, um... Have these these preconceived notions of what is beautiful or how much you're allowed to weigh or what people are gonna be looking for And you want people to like you because you're in high school and you're young and you think that if people don't like you the world's gonna end um, And it doesn't I promise <laughs> it doesn't end um, So you, you have all these things in your head in Probably about middle school um, Is when my eating disorder started to come out uh, I met a girl who was very small and she would compare our bodies which was weird because I was in middle school I didn't understand like much about the world but it, it, it she was always smaller than me and I just remember that just it, it was this isn't what started everything but it's just the memory that came back but I, I went into high school with that kind of experience or maybe that thing in the back of my head and in high school I had the idea that unless you are small, nobody is gonna like you. And that is, could not be farther from the truth, guys. Seriously. It, it's, it's what was in my head at the time. So, I wanted to stay small. When I went into high school, I weighed probably 105 to, nah, probably about 110 pounds. Um, I was playing basketball, I was doing stuff like that. I was 110 pounds, everything was great. Um, 
And then I, I, I just got smaller. Um, I noticed it a little bit because, you know, when you are looking at yourself in the mirror and you're standing up and you can see your ribs, I realized that uh, a little bit through my freshman year, I couldn't see my ribs anymore. And for some reason, that was the worst thing to me. Um, and that was kind of when I decided I, I needed to be smaller because for me, at that time, in that place, with everything going along, going along on around me, <laughs> and all of the peer pressure, I thought in my brain, if I couldn't see my ribs, I was fat. And that that's scary to me thinking about 2011 Lauren now, where I am now, and then thinking about that thought process. It's very scary to think that I, I actually firmly believed in that. So I stopped doing basketball because I, I stopped, I stopped eating. Um, I started to kind of sneakily shrink my meals down. Um, I would eat maybe half a plate and then I would kind of, when my mom wasn't looking, I would scrape it off into the trash and then just go upstairs. And then it started getting to the point where I said I ate at lunch, I ate lunch at school, I had a big lunch, I didn't, and I would go a couple days without eating more than like a bite of a granola bar um, and this happened for a very long time it happened for months I just stopped eating and eventually I had to stop playing basketball because I was so malnourished I couldn't play anymore um, just walking made me nauseous um, I wouldn't even drink water I convinced myself that water tasted disgusting I convinced myself that Everything tasted disgusting. I, I, I stopped eating all food. And if I did eat, it was like a tiny bite. Um, my parents started to notice. Uh, I, I was just skipping meals. So when they started to notice, my next step was I ate slow. I ate very slow. And what that does is it tricks your brain into thinking you're full. If you take a lot of bites, there's some scientific reason behind it. It, it has something to do with how many bites you take. I would eat very slow to trick my brain that I was full, so I wouldn't eat as much. Um, and it just, it started to get, it spiraled out of control. Um, I finished high school senior year weighing 93 pounds, I mentioned that. And by the end of uh, junior year, I had actually started to make myself throw up every time I ate. Um, because I struggled. Anorexia, by definition, is the eating disorder in which you are almost afraid of gaining weight or afraid of food um and for me the fear of food was there the fear of gaining weight was what was driving it for me but um my parents started to notice they started to force me to eat and then i met my i met my boyfriend then husband now um and he helped me walk the path to getting away from that and uh, I'm I'm very grateful for that um, because now I am I'm not heavy uh, I'm, I'm 110 but I am I'm doing so much better uh, than I was in high school and that was only six years ago you know that okay only six years ago okay that was not that long ago and that's it's very scary so for this game to take anorexia as an idea and put it into a game and then walk you through the thought process of this person and what their actions lead them to, which can, in worst case scenarios, it can lead to a hospital. Um, it leads to a lot of therapy um, and things like that. But anorexia is very real. All eating disorders are very real and they are invisible. You become a master of hiding things. As it capitalized in this game, you become a master of hiding the hunger you become a master of hiding how sick you're feeling or you, you you just always talk your way out of things and this game showed that and it did it pretty well overall this was interesting i think the story was pretty good it did it was very short it's a game jam game the graphics are interesting they're minimalist um it's hand drawn i always like a hand drawn looking game uh it it reminded me of journal we played through it a little while ago um so it, I had no problem with the graphics, the voice acting was fine. There were little subtle things in the uh, the voice acting, the sounds was fine. There were little subtle static noises um, and muffled talking, stuff like that. It was a very simple game for a very big message. And I think as a game jam game, it did it pretty good. Um, but this isn't everybody's story, you know? It's just this character's 
story and we walked through it so overall I enjoyed this I think it is free if you guys want to play through it I'm not sure there's replay value on it but it's a very heavy subject and I'm going to delicately edit through this because I know I went off on a lot of tangents because if I'm being completely honest with you I don't think about it too much um and part of the reason why I don't think about that part of my life is is I'm 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 deathly afraid that it'll come back um and in the last two years even when I moved out of my parents house I'm, I'm in the happiest position I've been in in my entire life it has still creeped back into my life it has it's not something I've completely eradicated um I've taken steps to make sure it doesn't get as drastic as it was in high school but there there are periods of time where all I've had to eat or consume for a day was my morning coffee you know and there are there are little things little subtle things that I find coming back um just like like a couple months ago um one of the things I would do was, you know when you get really hungry, and you're so hungry it hurts your stomach? Um, for me, there's a point past that, where you don't feel it anymore. And then I just go on with my day and I don't have to eat anything. And that happened a couple, couple months ago, I went through a spell of that, I, I, I struggled with it. Um, I have a fantastic support network, um, now. I have my husband, who I can tell anything to, I have a really good friend, uh, you guys have seen, Maria. Um... And they all help me uh, when I do slip up, but it is never something that has completely left. Um, and I'm a little bit scared that it never will, but that's just me sharing a little bit too much with you guys. Um, I've never really talked about that. I've talked about it on live streams, but I've never really talked about it in a YouTube video. And I saw this game and I, I, I wanted to kind of remind myself... Um, of everything and I think this game did a good job so I give a lot of kudos to bedtime phobias um, and, and thank them for getting back to me about the game um, I, I I think it's it's powerful so um, but to anybody out there <laughs> it's it's a fight you can win you know you feel like you can't but it's a fight that you can win um, it's, it's like fighting a wolf. <laughs> it's gonna tear you to pieces. Uh, but it is something that you can come out of. It's not easy. By any means. It was like, um, crawling through a tunnel of broken glass while being on fire at the same time. It's not easy. It's probably the hardest thing. Uh, that, it, that, that I've, I, that I can remember. My memory's bad. But it's, an eating disorder is... I, I don't know what more to say, um, but look at me now, you know, you can, if you're struggling with it, um, I'm just one person on the internet, just somebody sitting in this room behind a webcam with my Hobbit and Lord of the Rings posters everywhere, um, you can win, you can win, even if you're not willing to fight, you can, you can win. Um, I, I, I don't know if I even should post this. I don't know. Guys, I, I went off on many a tangents. Um, the thing I'm going to capitalize on the end here is I've been here where this game is. I've been here. These exact thoughts have gone through my head. And now, six years later, looking back at where I am, I was, and comparing it to where I am, I do still struggle daily. I do. There are hardly times that I eat meals, I'll snack, and that's not good, but I am miles and miles and miles ahead of where I was. Um, just leagues ahead. And there's always going to be the fear, but it's it's something that you can win, and, and at some point it becomes something you don't think about constantly. Um, and I'm here now. And I'm doing a lot better. And I know that anybody out there that is struggling can. If you are struggling and you need to talk, I have a Discord. Um, it, there's a link to the in the description of every one of my videos that you can click on. And you will be invited to the Discord. I'm on it pretty frequently. I try to visit it every day, every couple of hours. Um, but if I'm not on it, 
there are at least 60 people, 55 people or something like that on that Discord that will talk to you. They're readily available. We have a channel in the Discord specifically for talking about very um, real subjects, very personal subjects, things that are something that you wouldn't normally bring up. We have a channel specifically for it. If you need to talk to anybody about anything, my Discord is full of some of the best people that I have ever encountered on the internet. And I am not exaggerating at all. These people have gotten me through a lot. There are a lot of really good people in there. So please, I encourage you guys, join that Discord. It's a free app. It, it's not a virus. It is actually pretty cool. Um, and there's, there's always somebody out there. But anyways, that's just me sharing way too much about my life. That's another chapter of my life that has been opened up. Look at me, I'm opening up so much now. Um, but anyways, we're gonna come back with another game, guys, and, um, on Tuesday, and that's gonna be it for today, but I am sorry about how much I kind of went off. I just started talking and then started to just disappear. It was, it's, it's a weird thing. I don't talk about it much, um, to anybody. Not too much anymore, but... Anyways, Shrinking Pains. I think it was a pretty impressive game, especially for a game jam. I do really appreciate it. It came out earlier this year. It is on Steam and it's free, guys. Please check out the links that were shown at the beginning of this video if you have the time. And um, that is it for me. I will post this video. Even if it makes no sense, I'm going to post it so that I can look at it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We're going to be back with another one-off game on Tuesday until I decide on an official series before I go on vacation. Reminder that I am going on vacation. I am backlogging all of these videos. They were all recorded weeks before they're going to go up. So just keep that in mind. And I am very, I'm not very sick, but I am sick to the point where it hurts to speak. So I am just powering through it as much as I can. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave me a like or comment down below the, the, down below the video. If you liked me, then please subscribe today for some more content in the future. That's it for me today, guys. And um, have a fantastic day and turn out there wherever you are, ladies and gentlemen. And please stay safe. Much love to your faces. I will see you guys in the next video.